chapter 12. We're in the middle of chapter 12. And um, we have been talking about the sin of David, David's sin, which on the surface level, of course, looks worse than it is. But it still is considered a very serious sin based on the fact that David is so holy and uh, he is judged a little uh, harsher than a regular person. And additionally, um, uh, the fact that David did cause a chilol Hashem. He caused a um, desecration of God's name by um, doing things that looked like sin. And as we've mentioned, that it wasn't necessarily a sin that um, an act, a, a fully a full act of sin, but it was a uh, something that seemed like seemed like sin. So it definitely was not. It was not very um, very good for publicity. Uh, in fact, we do know that David was taunted all the days of his life because of this sin. So it, it, it is interesting that we, how you know, our perspective of David after knowing, you know, the hind, hindsight and knowing how great David Hamelech was, but at the same time, living in that time, uh, there were people who felt that David Hamelech is, uh, you know, he's just like a typical politician who, uh, you know, does, uh, you know, commits different sins, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, that there, there was, there were elements, you know, of, of that, uh, you know, com coming from that, fr from that frame of, of thought. Now, um, so we're going to, uh, we are going to uh, start here uh, with verse... I'm going to start verse 11. And uh, the previous uh, part mentioned uh, a parable. We spoke about this parable where there was a um, rich person and he had a neighbor, a poor person. And there was a guest who came and Nasan Hanavi told this parable to David Amelot. He said the guest came to the rich person. The rich person, instead of taking from his own uh, flock, his neighbor had a sheep that was right there. So he decided to take his neighbor's sheep and why waste, why spend my own when I could just take my neighbor's? And, um, and so this sheep, this little sheep that the neighbor had was the only one the neighbor had. And um, uh, it, it was like part of the family in a certain sense. Uh, it would drink from his cup, uh, from, from from the owner's cup. It would be like uh, uh, be it would be to, it would eat from their, his bread. It would sleep. Uh, it would sleep next to him. It was like a, it was like a daughter to the to the uh, to the owner. And this rich person goes, and he instead of taking from his own, he he uh, uh, takes this uh, sheep from the poor neighbor, and um, um, and he prepares it for the guest. And of course, David Amelech is, uh, is, of course, David Amelech hears the story. He says immediately, uh, he says this person deserves the death penalty, meaning as a sort of like a penalty, you know, as a, as a serious punishment for doing such a terrible thing. Uh, and, um, and then he should also pay four times as much or eight times as much, depending on the commentary. And, um, and Nasan Hanavi tells him, you are the person because you went and uh, and uh, you took Uri Achiti had one wife and you went and took her and um, uh, you killed him in the Cherev B'nai Amon the sword of Amon and um, and now the sword will not will not be removed from your house forever because of the Akev Ki Bizisani uh, because you have uh, embarrassed me um, or scorned me. Uh, and you took Eshes Ur Yahachiti, you took the wife of Ur Yahachiti to be for you for a wife. And that's really where we're, we're up to, um, or approximately where we're up to. So uh, so we're going to start here, uh, verse 11. Again, we're in chapter 12, verse 11. And um, uh, 
what we're going to see over the next uh, few chapters is these punishments coming to fruition. Uh, the, the, the verse 11 says, so says Hashem, behold, I shall raise against evil against you from your own household. And this is hinting to David's son, who's going to create a rebellion. David's son is Avshalom. And uh, it, so the verse says, I shall raise evil against you from your own household. I shall take your wives away from before your eyes and give them to your fellow man who will lie with them in the sight of, the, of this son. And that's also referring to Avshalom at some point in that story. Uh, Avshalom uh, uh, um, lives with uh, David's uh, concubines and his wives. And, um, uh, and so that is part of this punishment. Though you have acted in secrecy, I shall perform this deed in the presence of all Israel and before the sun. Uh, basically, um, this is your punishment. David said to Nasan, I have sinned to Hashem. That was his, his, his statement. The first thing he said was, I have sinned to Hashem. And what that really means is that it's not a sin to man what he did. It really is a sin between him and God because uh, the actual sins that this looks like it wasn't. It wasn't a sin of murder. It wasn't a sin of adultery, but it was something that he did wrong called Chilul Hashem. He uh, desecrated God's name. So uh, the verse continues and says that Nasan responded to David, so too Hashem has commuted your sin, you will not die. However, because you have thoroughly blasphemed the enemies of Hashem in this matter, the son that has born to you shall surely die. So He's telling him that basically his his you know he is going to get punished, but uh, but Hashem is not going to take away David's life. Now, um, verse fifteen mentions Nasan then went to his house, and Hashem struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became gravely ill. So the 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 uh, the, the baby was born, and. Um, uh, as we saw in the end of the last chapter, and um, um, and uh, the prophet tells David that the baby's going to die, and here we have David pleaded with Hashem on behalf of the boy, and David undertook a fast. Um, and when he came in for the night, he lay on the floor. It means David was David was not um, interested in having any pleasure. He wanted to spend all of his energy on praying and begging God for uh, the, the child to live. And uh, the elders of his house stood over him to raise him from the ground, but he would not consent and he did not eat food with them. So uh, the, the, the story is that he basically fasted and he... Uh, he, 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 the, the, the people were concerned about his mental health, his emotional health. It happened on the seventh day that the baby died and David's servants were afraid to tell him that the baby had died. For they said, behold, if the baby, when the baby was alive, we spoke to him, but he would not listen to us. You know, they kept trying to tell him, why don't you go to sleep? Why don't you eat more? Take a drink. Yeah, you know, you need to relax. Maybe the doctor should come in and prescribe something for you. Uh, and he refused. He just wanted to pray. And uh, they said, if if when the baby was alive, you didn't listen. He didn't listen to us. How can we tell him the baby has died? And uh, he will do something terrible. They were like nervous about what he might do to himself. He might, uh, you know, hurt himself. And um And so uh, David saw, verse 19, David saw that his servants were whispering to themselves, and David understood that the child had died. David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they answered, he is dead. 
And then verse 20, David got up from the floor, bathed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. He came to the house of Hashem and prostrated himself. He then came to his house and at request, they served him food and he ate. So, uh, and and here the, the, the servants can't understand what is happening because they assumed that whatever after the baby if the baby dies things are only going to get worse and it turned out that no the 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 complicated time was when the baby was sick once the baby died david was now basically wants to move you know wants to somewhat move move forward and and, and move on and um and that's what he explains them they're very shocked they can't understand him his verse 21 his servant said to him what is this thing that you're doing for the living baby you fast and wept when the baby died you got up and ate a meal they they can't understand what 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 is happening and he said while the baby baby was alive i fasted and i wept for i thought who knows maybe perhaps hashem will show me favor the baby will live so he wanted to dive in as much as he could and pray and beg Hashem for mercy. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will be going to him and he will not return to me. And so that's a very um, painful statement. And But that's the way David HaMelech saw that uh, there's, I'm not, the, not going to daven for, uh, you know, uh, a miracle of of revival of the dead now uh it it it, it it's over and when tchias hamesim happens when the resurrection happens that 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 will happen i do wonder if 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 he was if david was around when eliyahu and elijah and elisha were after they did their miracles of bringing back a baby to life i do wonder if david would have would have considered begging Hashem to give back life to the child. Uh, in other words, it wasn't uh, something that he ever saw, that anyone came back to life, David. But maybe, I'm just throwing a thought out there, maybe had he seen Eliyahu bring a child back to life and Elisha bringing someone back to life, maybe he would have spent more time. I don't know. Uh, it's it's just a, just a thought. Maybe he would have spent more time praying and begging Hashem for such a, uh, you know, miracle that's uh, uh, beyond uh, anything that they've ever seen in the in, in the world. Um, but in any event, David Hamelach uh, got up and he bathed and anointed himself. One of the questions that the commentaries deal with over here is the fact that what about mourning? The baby died. Where's the shiva? What is he doing? Taking bathing himself. Now, uh, bathing himself is uh, not allowed during shiva. You know, for at least for pleasure. You know, persons allowed to clean themselves for cleanliness. Uh, 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 you know, health health reasons. But uh, for pleasure, that would not be uh, acceptable. And um, and uh, here he's. Uh, you know, it seems like he's, you know, the, all the rules are, 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 are over. It doesn't seem like he's following the Shiva part. He uh, bathed, the, the first thing he does, he bathes himself, anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he came to the house of Hashem and prostrated himself. And that's another thing that the commentaries discuss is what is he uh, going to, what is he doing there in the house of Hashem? Hmm. And uh, the Radak emphasizes over here that, you um, with regard to the to the um, morning, uh, there there are two things that um, two two understanding two explanations that could be said. Number one, before the burial, the laws of Shiva don't necessarily begin. I mean, there is discussion about this in the later in the uh, halachic. Uh, 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 um, in the Rishonim, in the, in, the, in the commentaries of the Talmud, but uh, uh, at least according to some opinions, the law of mourning, of Shiva, 
doesn't begin right away. Um, there's laws of Einen, but not the laws of Shiva. The laws of Shiva begin only after burial. And uh, that's why people can wear shoes to the, to the funeral. And then afterwards, they take off their shoes um, to, to do the Shiva. You know, the Shiva, you're not supposed to wear leather shoes. Um, but until, un until after the funeral, they, would, you know, they, they wear leather shoes. So basically, the laws of Shiva, uh, to, at least to some extent, they don't apply, or according to different opinions, according to some opinions, they don't apply until after the, the burial. So that would be a, an understanding of why he was able to, um, why he was able to um, um, uh, uh, take bathe and, and and change you know and change his clothing and so on. Now the other the other thought the other explanation has to do with the fact that a child that is not um, uh, a child that didn't wasn't the the pregnancy wasn't a full term pregnancy that child is not a child that one needs to sit shiva for because only if the child lives for 30 days do we know that the child is called a ben kayama is a healthy child in other words if, if the baby certain there are certain scenarios where a baby is born uh, sick and, and that that child the, the, there isn't a law of the, the laws of shiva but the baby is born early and so on so if he's not a full full term birth, it's not the laws of Shiva don't don't necessarily apply. So it's a, uh, it, it could be that that was the, the situation here that he uh, that uh, he was born early and therefore the laws of Shiva did not apply. Uh, so that's how they get around. They explain that.